I'm Nick. I'm Florence. I'm Tom, and this is Lewis from Dry Cleaning. And we're at Amoeba Records. And this is What's in My Bag. It was a bad surprise. Have you seen Gary with his tinfoil ball? Satoshi Tommy. It's always go to the dance music section first whenever I go into a record shop because I think that when you find something you really want, it's the most rewarding. When you're digging for gold and you find some. I actually don't know this track. Is uh, it just one track? Yeah, it, it, it's like house music 12 inch. So there's, it's like one track and like a radio version mm. and some remixes by the looks of it. Mm. I was gonna go and try and have a listen to this before showing it to you. Some quality <laughs> control, but I haven't had the chance. We don't know what uh, it sounds like. But it's three dollars, so you know, maybe could be a good chance. I, I, <laughs> I like a lot of the other work there. I've got Barry Manilow live here. Mm -hmm. Very nice gatefold sleeve. Um, I chose this because there's a track on it that is a real treat. It's called A Very Strange Medley. And it's him doing like a big medley live of all the jingles he's written. So for like KFC and stuff like that. It's really entertaining. So We, we listen to it in the van, right? Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. It's great. So yeah. I was very excited yeah. when I found this. Like a good neighbour, State Farm is there. Bill Evans at the Montreux Jazz Festival. Kind of one of three recordings of an after of his where he's got um, his trio with him. And it just seems like everything that happens at the Montreux Jazz Festival is kind of worth getting at some point. But like, I just love Bill Evans. There's something about the way he plays the piano. I could listen to it all day. I went to look for Prince Faro records, and there was two. One I had already, uh, and then there was this one, which got described as superb dub album, ridiculously heavy and very smoky. So uh, I've got it. Uh, it's got my favourite bass player who he works with on it, which is Flabber Holt, uh, who also played on Dub to Africa, which is um, the main record I know by Prince Faro. This is Donald Fagan of Steely Dan, the most polarising band <laughs> in dry cleaning. I think I'm the only person that really likes to listen to Steely Dan. So I've gone and I've picked out a record that was made after they broke up in 1980 or whenever it was. And this is the first album, I believe, to be recorded fully digitally, uh, which is why it sounds... Ever? I believe so, yeah. Whoa. And he recorded it with Gary Katz, who, who recorded all the Steely Dan stuff. And I think they did it entirely like in a digital process in the studio. So it sounds super corny. And I actually have played this record to people before and they've just kind of laughed at me, but I love it. I'm doing Miriam, who I love. And I saw, I saw them once, like years and years and years ago, in a venue in Leicester Square, which I feel like is not there anymore because yeah. I don't even remember what it was called, but it was Strange. like huge inside. It feels a little bit like a dream. You know one of those things that happened so long ago that you were like, did that really happen? Anyway, I saw them play there, which is the only time I've seen them play, and they were fantastic, obviously. And then earlier this summer, we were in Croatia, and they were in the same hotel as us because they were playing the same festival, and they were just like having breakfast at a table, and I was very starstruck. So as soon as I saw this, I had to pick it out. So this is this is a bit of an oddity I sort of found, well oddity to me, uh, we're massive Yasuaku Shimitsu fans, we liked uh, Kakashi and the Mariah record. I don't know much about this one I have to be honest but it sound, from the description it's, uh, it's an album of, the, of work he made for his experimental dance music and I know that later on in his recording career he's doing quite a lot of saxophone sort of stuff. And he also made a record of like music for adverts as well. So I thought I'd give this one a bit of a punt. I mean, we love Kakashi so much, don't we? It's like, like one of our favorite albums ever. Me and Tom spend a lot of time talking about sleep and on. 
and as a result should know how to pronounce our Serenos. Cisnernos. <laughs> we should have to pronounce his surname. Um, but we're both massive fans and uh, this, Tom actually found this for me. I uh, didn't know this existed, but it's on uh, BBC Radio 1. I guess it's a 10 inch and yeah, I'm excited to hear that. Liaison Danger Royal. I definitely can't say it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Los Ninos del Parque, which is the kind of banger on here. It's got like a quite a heavy like industrial club vibe, but it's really cool. And you know, it's got, it's kind of down tempo, but you can definitely dance to this, which is what I like. <laughs> The nice thing about this shop is there's loads of unexpected things. I kind of had a plan and I've not stuck to the plan in any way. So this is the sounds of American doomsday cults. Again, what is this? I'm not totally sure. It was in the spoken word section. I was very happy to find a spoken word section. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so, I mean, there's a lot of writing on the back, but it, it doesn't, it's kind of random. Sect ready for Soviet attack. Members reported stocking up going underground in Montana. And then it's like an article from the Boston Globe about something. And, and so, uh, we don't know what this is. It sounds amazing. But I definitely want to listen to it. So I'm kind of hoping that it's like sort of in-house cult either music or announcements, pronouncements sent to the members, something like that. I kind of... Uh, enjoy that kind of thing, uh, sort of charismatic people going mad. Sympathy for Satan and the sorrows of Satan, association with the Nephilim and spacecraft, all perversions of the third eye through distorted and exaggerated images, perverted movements of the body and break dancing and other forms of dancing. I also went for this by a guy called Peace de Resistance. He was the main, the main dude in a really great post-punk punk band called Institute from Texas. I really liked Institute. Um, I really liked how it developed over the records as well, it became slightly more seven tiers. Like in interviews, they'd be talking about Grand Funk Railroad and stuff like that, which I was like, that's an interesting mix with the, from where Institute came from. I think the band didn't split up, but he moved to college in New York. Um, so they didn't do quite so much stuff. And this seems to be his first solo record. I have had a quick listen to it before, actually. It's kind of, he's kind of gone full Lou Reed, but like, you know, um, Walk on the Wild Side kind of style almost as if his experience of New York had the same effect on him <laughs> as it did on Lou Reed or something, I don't know, but it's kind of like really like dirgy, quite sleazy, quite like, I don't know, yeah, really excited to sort of give it a proper good listen. This is Liturgy and uh, it was on my mind because uh, I'm doing a, a radio show it's the best way to put it, for uh, BBC. Me and Tom was doing a show and uh, they refused us. They didn't let us play a lot of artists and uh, Liturgy was one of them because it was too heavy. And uh, I'm a big fan of Liturgy. It's really hard to find in the UK and I was trying to get off the band camp recently and uh, it was all sold out, so happy to find. I've got two Cat Stevens albums. This one is my favourite. Uh, there's some there's some songs from the Harold and Maud soundtrack on here, and I think it was when he was at the sort of peak of his powers as a songwriter. I think. So shine, shine, shine. Shine, shine, shine. I don't really know the this record very well, but it's got was Dogger Donut on it, which is obviously the sort of his mad instrumental thing that he did that's been sampled a lot. There's a song called Magic Dance by Sue Kramer that is so unbelievably and weirdly similar to this song, but it's got a vocal on it. And they came out around about the same time. Uh, I've never really been able to get to the bottom of that and find out what was going on there, whether one was heavily influenced by the other. I think Cat Stevens released this first, but I would, I'd, I'd recommend going to check out Magic Dance by Sue Kramer and listening to the two songs side by side and try and understand what what was going on there. So this is 
one I just added in at the last minute. It was on display, playing music with animals. I was like, whoa, that sounds good. And uh, it seems to be, I know nothing about it other than what it says on the back. It seems to be like a man playing music in the presence of animals. So the first song is Froggy Went A Courting, which I think is like a folk song. And it says Froggy Went A Courting, 300 turkeys. Yeah. So I think he's just like playing the song and they're there and they're like reacting to the song. Anyway, that's what I want it to be. So we'll find out. I'm going to get that. I went according to the according to the by his side. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I picked up a couple of things here that I picked for similar reasons, really. Um, when we were making our first record at Rockfield, I found this band called Skeleton on a label called 20 Buck Spin, which is a really cool metal label, but they also put out some stuff by a uh, kind of weird techno guy called Vatican Shadow. This is kind of like just really straight up thrashy death stuff. It's really like it, someone's written ripping on it and that's just a, that's just a really good way to describe this record. Yeah. Then I also picked out this, which is by, it's a 1988 demo of a Polish heavy, evil thrash metal <laughs> band called Magnus. Just the cover is everything I kind of look for really in metal, like theater and a bit of sense of humor. It's limited to 200 copies, just love the cover. It's gonna be good. 88 thrash metal from Poland, it's gonna be good. And then you turn over and you see them and that's kind of confirmation. This is gonna be, it's a five piece as well, so. A it's five piece. For that to be bad. Yeah, five piece thrash band, you know, he's got, Nails coming out of his neck longer than I've got in my house. Uh, so this is always a good gift at Christmas for someone. Uh, it's an incredible record. But this one came out this year, I believe. Gold version of the greatest Christmas album ever. It's a Oh yeah, it gets me every time. The problem is quite, oh, it's really nice in Boston. Yeah, happy to, happy to find it, happy to see it. So before Halloween, yeah. Well, thank you very much for shopping with yeah, us. Yeah, I hope that was okay. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. This is a, a wonderful shop. Thank you. Wow, well, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's, been, it's been really fun, thanks for having us. Love to yeah. shop. I'm gonna see the otters, there aren't any otters, there are, but we can check. And I'm gonna see the water caterpillar, there's no such thing. Hmm? Yeah.